Welcome back to the Policy Biz Podcast. I'm your host, John Schwabish. I hope the new year is off to a good start for you and your family and your friends and your work. I am really excited for the beginning of the new year. Really great podcast episode a couple weeks ago. If you didn't check it out, you really should with Vidya Settler and Bridget Cogley on their new book, Functional Aesthetics. Um, I've got some great guests coming up in the next few weeks. Really excited about those. Uh, I've got a new newsletter that's over on Substack now because review, well, it shut down. Uh, I've been working on a variety of different longer blog posts, some bigger think pieces. I'm learning more about Tableau and I just took an R course. So I'm really trying to level up my skills this year. It's the ongoing quest to just be better at the work that we do. When it comes to this week's episode of the podcast, really excited for my guests. I have two guests this week. Stephanie Posovic, who you may know from uh, the Dear Data Project and has appeared on the podcast in the past, and Sonia Kuipers, who has her own uh, freelance studio uh, in Europe. They teamed up to create and design Greta Thunberg's new book on climate change. And when I saw that come out and their involvement in the project, I was like, I've got to have them on the show. I've got to learn more about it. How did it all work? How did it all come together? What were all the challenges? Um, and you're going to hear some interesting stories, uh, in particular, where you should get the book, where you should buy it in the UK or in the US. So make sure you listen to that part because it is actually kind of important. Um, and it's just a really fascinating story about how all this came together and what it takes to create a book like this with so many different graphs uh, about a really important uh, topic of our time, perhaps the most important topic of our time. So without a delay, here is this week's episode, my conversation with Stephanie and Sonia. Hey, Stephanie and Sonia, welcome to the show. How are you both? Good to see you. Good. Fine, yeah. Good to see you. Nice Sonia, to see how you are as you? well. I haven't yeah. seen you guys. I haven't seen, well, Sonia, I haven't seen you in what? Did we say like yeah. four or five years? Yeah, about or, that. Or, or 10 years feels, in COVID? Feels like 10, COVID yeah, time? the COVID years in between. We'll still 10, 10, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was five um, years, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was Information is Beautiful Awards in London, yeah. where I think, I think Stephanie, you and I had done a workshop that week, and I was like hanging out for a while. I did the IAB awards, and yeah, that was, that oh, was, yeah. That was, that was a good time. I met your mother. Yeah. yeah. That's right. You met my mom there. Yeah. yeah. My mom has been a my mom has my mom has been a frequent topic of conversation on the show recently. I don't I don't know why. Um, so hopefully she'll very she'll lovely like person. Too. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thanks. Um, so just for folks who are wondering, who are listening, like what is going on? My mom does like to travel with me back in the pre-COVID days. So London. She also joined me in Pamplona for uh, Melopier. So yeah, Miami a couple times. Yeah, it was, she, she's a good traveler. So mom, if you're listening, you're fun to travel with. Um, okay, so let, let's get back on track. So um, you both have this amazing new project out with Greta Thunberg on climate change. Um, the designers of the book and so i thought we would just talk about it for a bit so uh so maybe we could start with this uh just so folks kind of know who you are um just like a little quick introduction and then we can talk about the project so maybe uh sonia do you want to start give folks a little background uh yeah um i'm sonia kuipers uh people know me uh probably better as studio terp um that's that's my uh studio i work uh, as a one woman one woman uh, uh, company and I do data viz, data art projects, um, mainly data viz for uh, clients and uh, more data art projects uh, are uh, my own, uh, uh, of own personal interest. And um, yeah, like you said, we met in uh, London. That's where I uh, received uh, an award for my view on the spare project, which was uh, uh, a data visualization on uh, suicide numbers. So that that's the sort of stuff that I create uh, on a personal basis. And uh, yeah. I like to do more of uh, projects that uh, yeah have an extra twist. Um, um, yeah, experiment with shapes and right. colors. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Stephanie and I go way back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. But I guess uh, I should say who, what I do. Yeah, I can say a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, um, 
because you've been on the show a few times, but maybe uh, tell folks what you've been doing the last year or so. Because uh, you have some cool projects going on, too. Yeah, yeah. So um, I guess I am, a, I say I'm a designer, artist, and author. I work with data, mainly experimental data design projects, and then I also teach workshops as well. Um, so some of the stuff that I've been doing over the past uh, year or, or so includes, um, you know, I do a lot of art residencies, like um, it could mean drawing um, how data and samples come from a study participants all the way through to the data researchers who end up using that data to study um, like medical and health outcomes, um, like uh, an art residency I did with a research group, people like you, or it could be um, making a participatory artwork for the welcome collection from visitors' perceptions of happiness and what makes them happy, um, to uh, publishing a book with Miriam Quick, um, I Am a Book, mm -hmm. I Am a Portal to the Universe, which I, um, you know, we've definitely talked about, and um, which is a book that uses itself as a measure to um, kind of show the wonder of the world to you. So like every part of the book from its volume, its weight, its page thickness and more communicate data about our world. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, so yeah, I'm doing a lot of uh, using data in more participatory, playful, friendly, accessible ways to connect people together um, and kind of to to have them think about themselves and their lives and their place in their wider communities. Right. And so I could see just, I mean, knowing your work, but also just from the way you both described your work, I can see how you both naturally could work well together um, because you both kind of work in that experimental, um, different kind of shapes, not necessarily like, you know, uh, you're kind of standard, like, not that there's anything wrong with it, but like the dashboarding world, kind of like, you're both kind of like, like trying different forms and different things. So I can see why this, this could be um, a pretty amazing partnership. So I'm curious about the book. I don't have it yet. Um, it hasn't made its way across the pond. So I'm, I'm still waiting. So, um, so I thought we could start with how did it come about? And then what was the work like? So, um, so Stephanie, maybe you want to start and then, and then we can talk about how all of it kind of pieced together. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I'll give some background on the project. So occasionally I will design a book for Penguin. Um, it has to be a very special book um, because in my job previous to uh, like working in DataViz, I was a book cover and book designer. So I was asked, um, maybe six or seven months before the project truly began, um, if I would like to design a book for Greta Thunberg. And so I said yes, and I had to keep it a secret. Um, but that was working under the assumption, <laughs> yeah, that I would, I would do the text and the charts because they know, you know, this is my realm. Um, right. But then when it came to it, um, it, you know, it's, it's for her book, The Climate Book, which has, I think, over 100 of the top climate contributors alongside Greta. So it's like a really big, logistically complex um, book with lots of different people involved and lots of charts um, and right. a very, very quick turnaround. And so it was very obvious that that was not a one person job that needed two people. And so that's when I asked Sonia to see if uh, she would join, <laughs> join the project <laughs> and, uh, you know, oversee the charts in the book and yeah. I will hand it over to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so how did that, so how did that work? So Sonia, you get this call. Did you just get like a mass of data and graph like drafts and you just went to work? Like what was the process of pulling all that together? Cause it sounds like it's across multiple authors. So mm -hmm. like, how does, how did, yeah. Maybe just well, talk about your process. Um, yeah. Well, first I want to, share that um, uh, Stephanie reached out and I had to do a dance in my living room <laughs> because <laughs> here, here was Stephanie asking me <laughs> to join her in this uh, marvelous uh, journey. And um, so that was the first thing that got me very excited about uh, taking this uh, job because um, 
I'm gonna say it again. Stephanie, you're one of my heroes in in uh, data viz. So yeah, that was. <laughs> It was very blessing. nice of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With this project, you were totally. You were more of a hero to me. I promise you. <laughs> this is a very. We're each other's heroes now. We don't need a, <laughs> yeah. We don't need any yeah. other person in here. Yeah. Um, no, but um, um, I didn't exactly know I was coming uh, my way uh, at the beginning. Um, it was just yeah there's this book uh, and and i was told it was by greta so i was also like okay wow uh, greta yeah. but the, the yeah the actual amount and size wasn't that clear yet uh, uh, at that point mm -hmm. but um i think the real uh, thing hit me when we had this excel file with all the all the graphs that uh, that we would have to uh, incorporate. So, um, yeah, we had this big file with the, all the graphs um, mentioned, picture of the JPEG or whatever image they uh, provided. And um, they already had some other team work on Illustrator files of that JPEGs. So um, that's when uh, I realized, okay, I have to really, uh, <laughs> Put uh, pull hard uh, on my um, yeah on my graphs uh, knowledge here. So yeah. Were the were the graphs? So I'm guessing that most of the authors again I don't have the book yet. So, but I'm guessing most of the authors are scientists, climate mm. scientists, maybe some advocates. So I'm guessing the data is pretty dense. The graphs, based on at least the economics field, the graphs aren't great. So were you primarily trying to make them look better or were you reimagining re some of them? I'm guessing like, you know, hey, here's a line chart, but could you make something different, sort of more engaging? Like where, yeah. where were you thinking as you started going uh, through it? That would have been great, but but the time, <laughs> the time did, <laughs> ah, yeah. it didn't allow to, to, to uh, really broaden uh, anything. I think there was some small uh, uh, changes considering uh, which direction uh, a bar would go? It, would it be uh, vertical or hor horizontal? S s things like that, but not 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 really in shapes or uh, other uh, ways of handling the the graph because there just wasn't enough time to to actually. We didn't have the data um, available also, so there were just these pictures and the the underlying Illustrator files. Mm. And so then, how does the the design part of this work because there's the design of the graphs and the design of the book. So how did you two work together to? Yeah, Stephanie. Um, Stephanie is the lead here. So, yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. Sure. And uh, actually, I just want to interject one little thing just to give you a sense of like what Sonia was dealing with. Um, yeah, yeah. So you know, it was like a hundred. I mean, not everyone had a chart, but it's like 100 contributors who are pulling charts from everywhere. So it could have been uh, like scientific, you know, using some scientific software or like charts right. that they really wanted to use that were like pulled from, I don't know, like the Washington some Post random or right. some random source of, or, or from like uh, the IPCC report or it was just a JPEG um, or yeah. it was like from PowerPoint. You know, it was all sorts of stuff all like JPEGs, often not editable. And that's why it, they all had to go, uh, you know, when Sonia was talking about Illustrator files, they all had to go and be artwork and redrawn and made wow. editable. So it, like they started from like, like not like really, yeah. really rough quality stuff and <laughs> at all sorts of yeah. places, all sorts of charts. And then that like, the, you know, those um, Illustrator files is what Sonia had to work with. So, so it was like a huge, it was a huge old mess. <laughs> she that had but it's to bring also together. like, yeah, but it, it, you know, from like an author's perspective, I can imagine it being amazing, right? Because you could just be like, I want a map. Okay, I'll take a screenshot of this thing from the New York Times. I'll take this bar chart from the journal of blah, blah, blah. And I'll take this map from over here and just send it to you to, <laughs> to <laughs> go off. Like, I can imagine from the author, it's terrific. But from your perspective, that that's a huge undertaking. 
Yeah, yeah. They, so, like, just to, uh, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, you're used to publishing, but, but for the listener, um, you know, yeah. like, the, you know, there was an art director, um, and then there was the editor. There was also a team in the U.S. that I think was overseeing it as well. It was, like, a joint publication in some capacity. And then I think also, you know, you've got, like, an image rights team that is checking that, I guess, all the rights, you know, the rights for everything is okay. And I think that also included some of the charts that some people wanted to use from various newspapers. I um, mean, then there was also an editorial assistant who was doing a lot of the heavy lifting, like liaising with all of the different authors. That was, I think, Sonia's like main um, kind of like liaison with all those like a hundred different people, right? Yeah. So yeah. So it was it was a super super complicated um, yeah. Yeah. thing, yeah, a thing to figure out and then like manage. Um, you know all these charts <laughs> um but just yeah. to like yeah to give you a sense of like the the way that that worked um with the book design um so i came up uh i you know came up with a book design and it's never like oh here's a design let's go with it it's probably like constant 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 iterations and back and forth and mm -hmm. back and forth which then was sent to greta and i guess her team and then they approve it and then I finally, get, um, you know, we get all the text and the content and then start to drop it in and design design from there. But what I, so I, I had like my, there's a blue that goes through the book, a Pantone blue and some other colors. So I had to choose like kind of these overarching colors to be harmonious with this blue Pantone mm -hmm. ink that feeds through the book. And then also the typography so I had to give that to Sonia, as well as wow. guidelines for how she should set up the chart to fit into my layout grid to ensure mm -hmm. that everything would align and be harmonious with like with the rest of the text. Um, right. So I was just sending Sonia like, <laughs> like really <laughs> annoying, but I hope useful. Like being like, <laughs> oh, you know, it needs. You've got two sizes of box you can fit it. This right. it has to be this size or this size, and it, it, things had to be fit into very very precise sizes, mm -hmm. also to ensure that everything would fit in the 464 right. page book. So yeah. it was like it, it's like a precision process. Yeah. Also, like the page size changed, and oh no, and like I don't know, there were a lot of changes. So. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So can I can I jump in here because yeah. you were saying annoying, but to me it was very helpful because I had all these graphs and this is was ver this was a very uh, helpful way of working because I had this framework that was there and I didn't have to think of all other stuff uh, also. So it wasn't yeah, it really wasn't annoying. It was, re it was right. the, yeah, the opposite. Yeah. But were there were there times or were there examples or are there examples of graphs where you're in this box and you want to fit something in either an annotation or or another data element and you just couldn't or like how did like can you give a can you give us an example of like where the size or the layout you had to do something different because of the actual like how it was going to fit on that page I think there was one map that we rotated Mm -hmm. Do you remember, uh, Stephanie? It was a uh, um, the legend wouldn't fit in uh, if we, or the map itself was it wasn't even clear if we put it in this uh, box size. So I think we rotated the map on the page. Um, oh, but you could still read it. Uh, yeah, you would still read it normally, but then the map was yeah. So because it, I think it was from because it was the um, like the North Pole. So mm -hmm. it didn't matter which way it. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, that's so funny. It doesn't matter, right? Because it's the North Pole. Yeah, that's no. the only time yeah. where you can really yeah. do that. Yeah. yeah. So, so then when it comes to, uh, I'm interested on the on the typography and the text in particular because I'm guessing that a lot of the graphs were pretty scientific, like a lot of climate change, you know, mm -hmm. journals. So, how? Uh, and I guess this is first a question for Sonia. Like, how did you think about 
making the text readable for non-scientists and like were you responsible for changing some of the words and like how did you think about annotating things so like Mm. you know normal readers could read understand it um i think it was mainly um uh, the abbreviations that were used that i changed here and there because um uh yeah we know we all know carbon carbon uh, symbols and, and things like that, but there were some that contained uh, abbreviations and, and, and things I had to look up myself, and mm-hmm. I'm thinking, if I have to look it up, imagine what I'll, what other people have to look it up. So, yeah, these were things that I checked and double-checked, and, and, and um, I think there were... I think there were uh, a lot that... Um, uh, text uh, that that uh, illustrate uh, that um, guided the the axis. I think there were, yeah, there were a lot that was were changed by me because I thought, why use an abbreviation? You can write it out. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Did you? Uh, so it sounds like there was. I mean, it sounds like there's a big team around this whole project. But did you either of you have conversations with the different authors and like get into the weeds of things, or was it always this kind of level of separation? And was that good or bad yeah <laughs> uh, sonia you um you would sometimes you had not direct contact but you were able to query oh no. no so i had um there was uh mnd at uh, uh penguin who uh, checked in with uh with all the scientists i guess um so if i had a question i would write it down uh saying uh, in this in this graph what does this, this mean or um for instance, one had an axis with uh, with had years on it, uh, jumping every twenty years. But then there was um, one jumping, yeah, a hundred years, and then twenty, twenty, twenty. And I was like, yeah, but you can't do that. You have to actually show, yeah, yeah. yeah you, we all know that. We all been, we've all been there. So these were questions that I uh, ask: Can I change this? Or uh, this is how I look at this. Um, what about if I uh, add this or take away this? Right. So now you both you you both um, do client work, and so I'm curious when you're doing client work. Let's go away from the book for a second. When you're doing client work in a similar sort of situation where you have, I don't know, your project officer or the person at the client who you're talking to, but they are pulling material from other folks at their company. Do you like? Uh, to talk to the individual analyst or the individual people like so I guess I'm asking like is this buffer person like would do you prefer to have someone like that or do you prefer to actually like talk to the people who are actually like knee deep in the data or neck deep in the data I guess (laughs) I'll start Um, yeah of course I would like to uh, have a conversation with the ones that collect the data or or, uh, yeah they know what's in there and what they want to communicate and I can check if it's there and, and um, uh, I can double check uh, with them if, if there uh, if there were mistakes because sometimes there are mistakes in there uh, an outlier doesn't have to be an outlier it can be a typo right so um, right. yeah um, that's what I like uh, to do with my with my clients but this was a yeah there was a whole different situation and I guess in this particular job it was better to have this person in between because mm. I think there would have been a project of, of two years or uh, yeah 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 I, I I would say just uh, that they should have had another person like I think the project would, would have done with one extra person to manage the hundred people like because mm-hmm. um, I mean it was incredibly complex and right. um, uh, Sonia's main contact, Ammon Deep, was incredible. But like, it was yeah. such a huge project because there were image rights, there were the charts, there were text cor- corrections, editor corrections, like sub-editor yeah. corrections for a hundred different people, including uh, Greta and her team. Um, it, like it was 464 pages. So it was yeah. like this huge, huge book. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, it yeah was... I guess just the, the management of this kind of project seems pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so let me ask, 
Um, you have uh, you both done uh, work uh, that clearly has uh, meaning for you as either professionally or, or personally. Um, and I'm curious when you have a project like this, which potentially has such a big impact and is clearly so important to our lives and our kids' lives and the future of the planet, does it have extra meaning for you when you're when you're working through it? Like, I know there's always drudgery in every project, but do you feel when you're t- able to take a step back for a second, do you feel like this is the kind of thing that you are excited to be in the field for? Oh. I guess uh, maybe Sonia, you can start. Anyway. Yeah, well, um, I guess it was. Uh, um, how do you say this? Um, I try to stay away from the subject matter <laughs> because, mm-hmm. yeah, it's 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 gloomy and it's doom <laughs> and and yeah. um, uh, so I just focused really hard on on uh, the job just to f- uh, make it yeah make it insightful and and pretty as well because that's always my goal. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, of course, as a subject itself, climate is really, uh, uh, yeah, a thing. And as you mentioned, for my kids, uh, I'm really proud that I had this opportunity to work on such a important book. And um, yeah, yeah um, how Greta has spoken before on it, uh, I think is truly amazing how these people uh, continue fighting. And um, I am not one of these persons myself, so but I am truly honored if I can help those people out uh, by my work. Yeah. Yeah. Steffi, what about you? I mean, you've done work with, with kids and you've done you know, all these different types of projects, but like when you have a project like this, does it, does it mean something extra? Yeah. I mean, I think there's some, I think the thing that's really nice about a project like this is that it, you know, I think as a designer, it's always nice to do a project that has some sort of like longevity and utility to it. Um, it, Like, I mean, that's the beautiful thing about a book, like a, like a really lovely book will stick around for decades, you know, like, yeah people will keep it on their shelves and that's so different from, um, or like be considered like a, you know, kind of like this canonic, like sort of piece of literature that like changes things. And so to be part of that, since paper, (laughs) you know, (laughs) lasts a lot longer than stuff on the internet. Like I think Mm -hmm. that is useful. That is a reference I think is, is a, it's a really nice design project. Um, I mean, that's why I love publishing in general, um, right. even if it is a thankless, a thankless, <laughs> a thankless yeah, yeah, industry. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to ask this question. I think I already know the answer, but I'm guessing people want to know whether you got to actually meet or talk to Greta. <laughs> Just for team. No. Just no. for people who are listening. Just for people who are listening, Stephanie and Sonia are both shaking their heads <laughs> with sad faces that they didn't <laughs> actually get to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe just do a shout out to her <laughs> on here <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I would really love to have an autograph in my book. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. right, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it was all through um, the editor. Uh, um, yeah, it was. So there, yeah, there was a little bit of a buffer, and also um, I. Um, Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm pausing. I mean, because I think like one of her like main advisors or an uh, an advisor is also her father. So I think they may work they mm. they worked on it on it like Together. yeah, they're like yeah. um like he's a strong part of her team. I right. think I'm allowed to say that. That's probably. I think that yeah, I mean I, I've read that I've common read that knowledge. About. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I just yeah. I, I I'm pausing, so I don't know what I'm allowed to say. Yeah, but right. Yeah, so but then they were in in contact with um with the editor. So I I was I was that was going to be my last question, but you said something that I, I wanted. This will be my last question. So, um, clearly, 
for this project, data and graphs are an important part of the, the storytelling. But lots of books, people just throw a graph in there and they don't do all of this work to think about laying it out correctly or, or making them look consistent. And so I, I want to ask whether you think data visualization, in the, at least in the publishing world, I guess we'll just stick within the publishing world, where you think data visualization is now at a point where it's um, almost a necessity or a requirement to have graphs and charts and diagrams that look really good throughout and look consistent across the book, rather than I think the way a lot of books have graphs they are just kind of like thrown in there and like it is the screenshot from the Washington Post or wherever it's just sort of thrown in there. But but do you think it's come to a point where there is more uh, uh, more emphasis and a, and a greater requirement for better graphs in, in books? I, yeah. Maybe start with Stephanie. Yeah. Um, I mean, just speaking from my experience, yeah. Uh, yeah. is I would say, well, I would say yes, and I will let Sonia expand upon it, but I'm just going to use the example of, you know, this was for Penguin Random House, this book, um, but also within – yeah, uh, published by Penguin Press in the UK, so they do a lot of the nonfiction, uh, and they do a lot of nonfiction science writing, and they also, um, I think they have like a, they may have a an Alan Lane is like their nonfiction imprint under this like house style, and mm -hmm. through that I believe um, that they also have people who are making all sorts of charts consistent within that text design style. So gotcha. um, I think, you know, Penguin is always really well known for their design. And, yeah. you know, I think that falls under, you know, that says the, the look of the chart, the styling of the charts, making sure that it's consistent with everything else is just as important. And I will hand it over to, to Sonia. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not um, uh, it's not that I I, I uh, do these things uh, often, so I I'm not sure if I can say something about it. But um, um, I would love to see more of it. I'm I'm not sure because uh, which kind of books are you uh, referring to? Um, um, I've seen uh, things pass by on scientific publications and then I'm still not not very worried <laughs> on the status of and I know they're they're willing but yeah, yeah. um there's lot still lots lots of uh, steps to make there and um yeah I hope I hope they see this book and they and they, that they can uh, see that it it's possible but yeah mm -hmm. So I like that. That's a that's a good way to end. So it's the doom and gloom of the of the subject matter, but maybe it's um, the the presentation will will inspire some people. So hopefully hopefully they get some of that. So, um, well, congrats on the book. It looks amazing. I can't wait to get it in my hands. Um, congrats to you both. I hope uh, Sonia especially. I hope you get your signed version from Greta. Yeah. I hope it shows up in the mail. And uh, yeah, thanks to you both for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks Thank for the you. invite. And thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the show. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you will check out both Stephanie's work and Sonia's work. And I hope you will check out the new book from Greta Thunberg. And I hope you will check out the policyviz.com blog for more tutorials and lessons on data visualization. I hope you'll check out my YouTube channel if you want to support the show. If you want to support it financially, you can head over to Winnow, where I have a text messaging app service where I'll send out data visualization tips and tricks every week for a small monthly fee. For like a dollar a month, you can get data viz tips and tricks to your t phone. Uh, if you want to share the podcast with uh, your friends, your family, your coworkers, uh, rate, review it on your favorite podcast provider. And if you'd like to rate or review my book, Better Data Visualizations on Amazon, I'd really appreciate that. Trying to get over the hump of the poor binding that occurred in a couple of printings that have sort of uh, affected the stars on Amazon. So if you want to go over and give a, give a good boost to it, I'd appreciate that. So until next time, this has been the Policy Viz Podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you.